Welcome to lecture number 13 for ECE 463 Modern Control, Pool Placement, also known as Bhaskara. Now the problem we're looking at in this lecture is how do I find my full state feedback gains to place the poles to the closed loop system, and how do I find the KR to set the DC gain? Uh, we'll be assuming that I've got a system of state space form, your x dot equals ax plus bu, y equals cx, assuming there's no D matrix, which is usually the case. I'm going to take measurements of all the states and feed them back with n feedback gains. If I do that, I can place all n poles to the system if it's controllable. But how do I do that? Then KR, what K is going to do, that's the fudge factor. That sets the DC gain, typically you make the DC gain 1. So if I tell the car to go 50 miles an hour, it winds up going 50 miles an hour. A couple definitions to start with. Open loop system. The open loop system is no feedback, that's just your A matrix. The eigenvalues of A are the poles of the open loop system. The closed loop system is with feedback. Here are the dynamics are A minus BKX. Um, those eigenvalues are where I want to place the closed loop poles. And the open loop poles really don't matter all that much. What does matter are the closed loop poles, the system that I actually use. A system's characteristic polynomial is the polynomial that has roots equal to the eigenvalues of A. It's also the denominator polynomial of the transfer function. So with those definitions, we can start into Bhaskara. Let's assume my system is controllable. Let's assume that all n states are measurable. I'm going to use full state feedback. U is minus kx times x to place the poles wherever I want. The challenge, though, is how do you find kx? Well, let's look at a couple cases. Let's assume the system's in controller canonical form. Uh, controller canonical form is nice because the A matrix has the system's characteristic polynomial on the lower row. And just for, to keep it arbitrary, let's have a fourth order system. Assume the system's characteristic polynomial is s cubed plus a3 s cubed plus a2s squared plus a1s plus a0. Let's also assume that I want to make the characteristic polynomial something different. It's the desired polynomial where I've got b's from the coefficients. If my system's in controller canonical form, I know what the dynamics are. I've got your x dot equals ax plus bu. The A matrix has ones on the off diagonal. And the bottom row is your characteristic polynomial with a minus sign. And the B matrix is just 0, 0, 0, 1. That's controller canonical form. Let's also assume I've got full state feedback. I measure all four states, and I feed them back with four feedback gains. If I do that, then it's going to be uh, plug that in here times b. The first three rows are all 0, the bkx. And the last row is going to be minus k0 for the first element, minus k1 for the second row, minus k2 for the third row, minus k3 for the third row, the fourth row. Putting it all together, here's your new system. Note that this is still controller canonical form, and I've got the new characteristic polynomial by inspection. So matching terms, here's my characteristic polynomial of the closed loop system. Here's my desired characteristic polynomial. Just matching terms tells me uh, k3 should just be the difference. It's b3 minus a3. K2 is B2 minus A2, and so on. So these are my feedback gains. Again, in controller canonical form, it's really easy to find. Also note that the feedback gains are related to how much I want to change the polynomial. If I don't want to change it at all, K is 0, which kind of makes sense. The more I want to change it, the bigger the gain is. So that's if the system's in controller canonical form. <coughs> Suppose the system is not in controller canonical form. Well, in that case, this is kind of the story of the fire extinguisher and trash can, one of my favorite stories. I've got a solution. Let's make the problem fit that solution. If the system's in controller canonical form, I know what to do. So let's find a similarity transform T that puts you in controller canonical form. So what I'm going to do is take my system, do a change in variable, convert it to controller canonical form, 
Now I know the feedback gains. It's just the difference in the characters, characteristic polynomials, S and Z. Now convert back. And I've got the feedback gains in X. That's Bhaskura in a nutshell. The challenge, however, is what similarity transform takes you to controller canonical form. And the method used in Bhaskura is to define your transformation matrix T to be the product of three matrices, T1 times T2 times T3. The first matrix is the controllability matrix, B, A, B, A squared B, A cubed B, that'd be for a fourth order system. The second matrix, T2, is defined by the system's characteristic polynomial. If the characteristic characteristic polynomial is s to the fourth plus a3s cubed and so on. It'll be one on the diagonals, the cubic term on the op diagonals, then the square term in a1. Basically take this guy right here, shift it right, shift it right, shift it right, and then you're done. That's t2. t3 is a flip matrix. Just take the elements and flip the order. t then is just the product of t1 times t2 times t3. That similarity transform will take you to controller canonical form. So in the state variable z, I've got your z dot is t inverse at times z plus t inverse b. That'll be in my transformed space. z dot equals az times z plus bz times u. az will be in controller canonical form. And note, however, that since t includes the controllability matrix, this only works if the system's controllable which kind of makes sense. So that's the first step of uh, Bhaskura, convert to controllability canonical form. The second step is find the feedback gains kz that place the closed loop holes where you want. And from before, that's just the difference in the two character characteristic polynomials. Take the current characteristic polynomial of the open loop system, take the desired characteristic polynomial, the feedback gains are just the difference between the two. The last step is I know kz, I want to know kx. Do a change in variable. Convert from z to x. And that'll just be that kx is kz times t inverse. Finally, as a check, just to make sure you did it right, uh, check the eigenvalues of a minus b kx. They should be where you placed them. So that is Bhaskura. Once I find my feedback gains kx, I can find kr. Assuming I want to make the dc gain 1, which is pretty typical, I want the output to follow the set point. Pick kr so that the dc gain of this system is 1. The dc gain is c times, let's see, well, driving, open loop system, u is kr r minus kxx, x dot equals a minus bkx plus bkr r y equals cx, at steady state, at the dc s equals zero. So solve for x, substitute, and here's the closed loop gain. Minus c a minus b k x inverse b k r. Pick k r so that the dc gain is one. And there you have it, that's Bhaskara. As an example, let's take a fourth order heat equation and put the closed loop holes arbitrarily at minus one, two, three, and four. The first step is T1 is the controllability matrix. That's just your B, AB, A squared B, A cubed B. So there's T1. And it is controllable. Kind of know that because of the diagonal. T2 comes from the characteristic polynomial of A. So in MATLAB, I just do what is the polynomial of the eigenvalues of A. There is your characteristic polynomial. This is just that first row, 1, 7, 15, 10. Shift right by 1, shift right again, shift right again. There's T2. T3 is the flip matrix, just ones on the op diagonal. My similarity transform that takes me to controller canonical form then is just T1 times T2 times T3. So in the Z space, AZ is just T inverse AT. And if you look at it, uh, yep, that's controller canonical form. It's one on the off diagonals. And there's your characteristic polynomial. Here's your BZ, 0001. 
that looks that all looks good. So check I am controller canonical form. Step two. Find the feedback gains to place the closed loop poles of AZ and BZ. That's just the difference in the characters to polynomials. So here's the desired characters to polynomial. I want poles at minus one, two, three, and four. Here's the current characteristic polynomial. The difference are my feedback gains. And it kind of goes backwards. The first feedback gain is the last one, 23, 40, 23. So KZ is just the difference in poles kind of flipped. Now convert back to X with a similarity transform of T kx is just kz times t inverse. So there's my feedback gains, 3, 5, 7, and 8. And as a check, the eigenvalues of a minus b kx should be where I put them. And sure enough, they are at minus 1, 2, 3, and 4. So these feedback gains place the poles where I want it. Uh, the control law, then, is just u equals minus kx times x, where kx is 3, 5, 7, 8. Finally, Find kr to make the dc gain 1. If I assume kr is 1, for lack of anything better for now, the dc gain without kr is minus c a minus b kx inverse times b. The dc gain is 0.04. I want the gain to be 1, so throw in a fudge factor kr to make it 1. In this case, kr is just 1 over that. kr should be 24. So here's my feedback control law. kr is 24. kx is 3, 5, 7, 8. And I could check that in MATLAB. If I um, plot the step response of the closed loop system, so here's the closed loop A matrix, closed loop B matrix, C doesn't change, D doesn't change. Take the step response, I can see I've got no overshoot when the poles are minus 1, 2, 3, and 4. The 2% settling time is 4 seconds ish. It's a little bit longer because my poles are minus 2, 3, and 4 aren't that much faster than minus one. Uh, but that's what a system behaves like where the poles are at minus one, two, three, and four. So that's one example. Bascura says I can place the poles anywhere. So if I have a heat equation, I can put the poles at minus one, two, three, and four. And again, that's not too surprising. It's a heat equation, I've got real poles. But I can also do kind of strange things. I can take a heat equation something that doesn't normally oscillate, I can make it oscillate. So suppose, just to illustrate that, I want to put the poles at minus 1 plus minus j3 and minus 5 plus minus j2 for no reason other than, than to illustrate that I can do it. Again, Boscura doesn't care. Uh, step 1, I input the system. We've already done that. Step 2, find the similarity transform. Again, already did that. Step three, find the feedback gains to place the poles. So here is my new desired characteristic polynomial. This polynomial has roots at minus one plus minus j3, minus five plus minus j2. The feedback gain will just be the difference between the two. And notice the difference is fairly large, meaning I'm making the system behave very differently than how it wants to behave. And your feedback gains in Z then are just the, this in reverse order. 289, 148, 44, and five. So that's the gains in Z. I want the gains in X. The feedback gains in X, where X and Y states V1, V2, V3, V4, the voltages. Kx is just Kz times T inverse. Here's Kx. And if you check the eigenvalues, sure enough, the poles are where I put them. And if you check the step response, well, if I want to make the DC gain 1, I'll check the DC gain. DC gain is 0 0.003. Pick KR to be 1 over the DC gain. KR is 290. So here's your feedback control law. There's KR. There's KX. And if you plot the step response, then, yep, it's behaving just like I expected. Pulls at minus 1 plus minus J3. Settling time is about 4 seconds. 4 of the real part. The frequency of oscillation is right around 2 second period. Uh, the period should be... 2 pi over 3, about 2 seconds. So he has to be hitting like I expected. That's kind of surprising. I took a heat equation and made it oscillate. 
Again, pole placement can do anything. I can put the poles anywhere I want. I can make them real. I can make them complex. I can make them stable. I can make them unstable. It's anything. So you might wonder, how did I do this? And the answer is raw power. For the step response, the input goes to 1. In this case, the initial value is 290. So I've got a huge input to get it to behave like that. This also shows up in the large feedback gains. The feedback gain I had was 200, 290, 204. So at t equals 0, um, all the states are 0. My initial value, the input, is going to be 290 rather than 1. With a huge input, I can force the system to do whatever I want. That's the saying of McDonnell Douglas in Thrust We Trust. Given a big enough engine, I can do anything. Um, you do have to watch out a little bit, though. The uh, mechanical engineers that designed your system picked an engine for some reason. There is a limit to how much power the engine can output. This right here says that if I'm allowed to output 290 times the power that I really need, I can make the system oscillate. Uh, that will be a really expensive uh, engine to put in the system. But if you had it, I could get this response. So sometimes you have to do a sanity check. Is this reasonable? Uh, for how this is used, pole placement can put the poles anywhere. So likewise, I can get any response I want. This is actually used. One of my friends, when he graduated from college, went down to Eglin Air Force Base, and his job was to take Soviet MiGs and make them behave like F-14s. The reason being is, if you want to test out your missiles, I want to see how does it behave against different aircraft. Well, F-14s are really expensive, but at the time, Soviet MiGs were really cheap. So what you could do is change the flight controller, change the MiG so its characteristics were the same as an F-14. That way, the, F the MiG would fly like the F-14 with a limit. You know, you're not going to be able to go beyond the capabilities of the aircraft. But for small perturbations, I can get the same dynamics. Same dynamics means it behaves the same. Uh, second application. This is a problem they have typically in the research labs. In the research labs, you typically have the latest, best, state-of-the-art robotics. If I get an assembly routine that works in the research lab, it may or may not work on the assembly line, because the assembly line doesn't have the expensive ro uh, robots that the research labs have. Well, doing software, I can make the research labs behave like the assembly line robots, and then see does it work on those robots. Again, that's just using full state feedback to change the behavior of the system. With Boscura, I can place the poles anywhere. It's up to you, the uh, control engineer, to decide where you want to put the poles. So that's lecture number 13, pole placement in Boscura for ECE 463, Modern Control.